Hi everybody, welcome back to Crowned in Faith. You know the deal, you know that if you have not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you subscribe to this channel and share because I know that a lot of people, I've received amazing testimonies of people whose life have completely changed, people have given their lives to Jesus because of some of the videos that I've literally released to you guys and shared. And honestly, if you're receiving, don't let someone else miss out on that opportunity. You know, what you're being impacted with, someone else may be impacted in a different way. They may give their life to Christ. They may consider going deeper in Jesus. So yes, share, subscribe, and keep tuning in to Crown and Faith. Let's start with a little background information. Um, I grew up um, in a school where I was told that if you hadn't kind of lost your virginity um, by a specific age or time, it was seen as quite strange. And I knew individuals who, um, because they had not actually um, had sex yet, um, they decided to just, um, lose it because they just wanted to lose it for the sake of it rather than um you know waiting like it was it was very much uh, this this needs to this needs to leave this needs to go and i feel like for a lot of us it's a lot it's a thing where we're taught we need to lose our virginity we need to lose it it just need, it needs it just needs to you know it needs to go we need to we need to lose our virginity so that um we can practice for the person that we want to be with. Um, I just wanted to explain to you that we're currently living in a society that teaches you that you need to lose your virginity, you need to practice, you need to be, you won't, it's, it's silly if you go into a relationship and you don't have a clue or an idea of what to do. But I just want to explain to you, right, that um, when God made Adam, he didn't say you need to practice before you meet Eve. He didn't say that. He didn't say you have to practice or he didn't say to Eve, you need to practice and you need to try out before I give you to your husband. No, he put them together to become one. They became one. They actually had intercourse. The Bible says that Adam knew Eve. So it's a thing where I believe that there's such a beautiful thing expressed um, through sex. It's the idea of getting to know one another, one another's bodies. You know, it's the idea of actually getting to know this person, what this person's, what this person likes, who this person is, and as you actually grow in intimacy um, through sexual intercourse, you're getting to know the person, and you know that innocence and that vulnerability is not something to be ashamed of. It's something to actually say, you know, this is this is this is what I'm allowing my husband, I'm allowing my wife to see this side of me, a side where I don't know everything, you know, a side where she may not know any, everything, he may not know everything, but we're coming together in that intercourse to become one and to know one another so i just want to obliterate that light in jesus name and i believe that um this is just me coming here to be vulnerable with you guys and to also just encourage you in your virginity i'm going to be 22 this year people have laughed at me people have have laughed at me and they and they've said things like wow you know try to make me feel small because um of something that's precious to me something something that is maybe not precious precious to somebody else you know they're obviously gonna look down on it and they're gonna laugh at it but at the end of the day your virginity is precious to christ and even if you have se sex even if you have had sex prior to i want you to understand that we are all new creations in christ jesus we're all new creations so it's a thing where don't look back and say well i feel really bad because i've given up my virginity now no the christ jesus we serve he is a forgiving god even if you've given up your um your your virginity already the lord god as long as you turn to him he will forgive you he will move your sins as far as the east is from the west he's made you a new creation in christ so just you deciding now i'm going to live a life of celibacy he sees that as something that is so beautiful because right now in this stage at this time when you are single where you are in a courtship your body is still the lord's whether you're even engaged your body is still the lord's the bible speaks about how literally we are his body 
like we are his bones you know we are his right now we are one with him he calls us his bride why because we're married to him so right now it's literally one on one intimacy until we actually step into that covenant of marriage we are 100% entirely his we are one with him his body is literally ours um and um he wants us to protect our virginity and i want you to know that you you are that righteous standard you may feel like you know i'm just pathetic you know no one else is um ever, everyone has sex especially being at university every single person is having sex you know i didn't even expect so many people to be having sex but it's it's so casual it is so casual you know there's some people that because they're having sexual intercourse with people that they're not married to when this person reveals their true colors and they become abusive when they when they, when they realize this relationship really and truly isn't for you it's so so hard for them to leave why because there have been emotional ties that have been made through that sexual intimacy and that's why Christ desired for us to honestly you know have that intimacy with one individual one individual who be who would be your husband um because he desired for that for that bond created through sexual intimacy to keep you to keep you as one together but some people are in toxic relationships and because of that sexual intercourse that sexual intimacy that has been shared it is so difficult for them to kind of release themselves from um this um these toxic relationships relationships and I just wanted to encourage you wanted you to understand that you know when you are not having sexual intercourse with somebody you genuinely actually have to be able to sit down and really not just put things under the carpet of sexual intimacy because sexual intimacy sometimes it's really such a easy way to brush things under the mat me being in a relationship right now with the person that I'm with we actually have had to cultivate a true relationship a lot of us are in sexual relationships where we don't actually have a friendship with the person we don't really know the person very well but we remain with them because the sex is good so whilst I'm in a relationship with Emmanuel I've got to know him in a way that's deeper than just sexual intimacy on in all honesty I've never experienced like that in my life with the people that I was with in the past, we were doing, we were having, you know, we, um, sexual, um, and we were crossing sexual boundaries with one another, right? However, <laughs> the transparency, emotional transparency, emotional vulnerability, that was not there. We did not have deep chats. We did, we did not have talks, you know, and and express our hearts to one another. We didn't explain ourselves to one another. We didn't, we didn't try to get to know one another. It was just about the physical, and I just. I'm just so amazed at how um, restraining from um, sexual intimacy, yes, it is very difficult at times, it is difficult, but I've seen the fruits of just what it's produced in me, um, discipline, not only that, it's just pr produced such a great bond with Emmanuel, um, who is my beloved. So. I just wanted to come on here and to really just encourage you, you who feels, well, I've never had a boyfriend in my life, you know, and I've never, I can't relate to anyone when they're talking about, you know, these types of things, or you even, you haven't even had a sexual past at all, you haven't crossed any boundaries, you literally haven't even had your first kiss, I want you to know that that is precious in the, in the, in the eyes of the father, you are his you are his and don't feel you know people are gonna laugh at me Who, what audience are you living for you're living for one audience and that is Jesus I I was pressured by friends that I had I was pressured um, by the expectation you know of um, of people having sex around me to go and now explore do you understand when I even had um, um, I kissed a guy for the first time when I kissed a guy for the first time like it was mad because I came into school and I told the whole of my class. Why? Because it was for an audience. It wasn't for me. It wasn't, it wasn't for me. It was for an audience of everyone to know, oh yeah, this is what's happened in her life. Sometimes we can be on fire about the word. We can be on fire for God. But then when we start talking about purity, we become shy. Be on fire. Be on fire for your purity. Be on fire for the fact that you are, you, you are pure for Christ and you're living righteously for Christ Jesus. Be bold in that because the righteous are as bold as a lion not just bold enough to preach not just bold enough to you know spread the gospel and these types of things they're bold in everything he's spoken over us and everything that um 
you know we have in him they're bold about their purity in Christ Jesus you don't ha you don't have to feel embarrassed about it you know I'm here rooting you on ladies and gentlemen I'm here encouraging you you don't have to feel pressure you don't have to feel you know he wants to do this with me so you know let me just push and compromise compromise my values understand if a guy wants if a guy wants you to compromise your values does he really value you in the first place because if he valued your values do you understand if he valued your values then he would respect them and he would not try to push them he would not try to push them when you say no when you say no he should respect that no and if he or she is not respecting that no you need to uh, does, will he respect me later on when I tell him no about certain things when I tell him that I don't want to do this or I, will he just be like I don't care or will she just be like I don't care I want it my way do you understand because if you've said something to the person and then they're now trying to push that it's because they want it their way it's because of a selfish motive it's because they want you to conform to their truth rather than the truth that you carry which is the word of God so I just want you to understand that you don't have to feel embarrassed you don't have to feel shy it's girls men gentlemen if you can resonate send me an email tell me you know i will happily you know keep encouraging you to stand pure for for christ the christ jesus yeah i'm not judging anybody who doesn't believe in this view at all i'm just expressing my own and i'm encouraging those who do have the same um opinion as um me um to um feel encouraged let me just finish this with a prayer for you Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for every individual who has come to listen to this in the mighty name of Jesus. I bless you, God. I thank you, for Father, for just giving me these words to say. Lord, I thank you that you just literally placed them on my heart. And I pray that these children of yours would be encouraged, encouraged to stand on fire for you, Lord God, in their purity, Father Lord, purity in mind, purity in heart, purity of their body, Father Lord. I pray, Lord God, that they would continue to realise that though this world though this world speaks over them and tells them that they need to lose their virginity and conform to everything that the world is saying is right the world is saying is normal I pray that we would conform to your truth I pray that we would conform to your normal Jesus Christ and I thank you Jesus that the Bible says let God be true and every man a liar and we bring every single thing that tries to exalt itself above the word of God captive right now in the name of Jesus father I thank you Lord that you have called us a generation of pure pure lovers of your gospel pure lovers father lord pure lovers of just your heart father lord pure lovers lovers who will be pure in everything that they do father and i pray for strength and grace lord the spirit of embarrassment will not be their portion but we will be bold in us in just standing in our boldness father in jesus name i just release the grace for individuals who come to watch this video to stand for purity um to consider um you know uh, standing in um purity for christ in terms of their virginity lord and um abstaining until marriage in jesus Jesus name I pray for you thank you father thank you that you love them thank you that they are your bride they are your beloved bride and oh you love them so much in Jesus name amen